So uh, we're talking today about uh, about filling our buckets and what that uh, what that feels like. And so um, to kick us off today, a friend of mine, Zimri, is going to come out here and read this story that this uh, that this theme actually came from, and uh, to get us going. And so uh, yeah, he'll kick that off. So you can just sit back and relax for a minute, and uh, we're going to get it going. You ready, buddy? Yeah. All right. Today, I'm going to be read, reading part of Have You Filled a Bucket Today? by Kara McLeod, illustrated by David Messing. All day long, we are either filling up or dipping into each other's buckets by what we say and what we do. You can't see it, but it's there. You have a bucket. Each member of your family has a bucket. Everyone has an invisible bucket. Your bucket has one purpose only. Its purpose is to hold your good thoughts and good feelings about yourself. You feel happy and good when your bucket is full, and you feel sad and lonely when your bucket is empty. Other people feel the same way too. It's great to have a full bucket, and this is how it works. You fill a bucket when you show love to someone, when you say or do something kind, or even when you give someone a smile. When you treat others with kindness and respect, you fill their bucket. You can also dip into a bucket and take out some good feelings. That's bucket dipping. <laughs> when you hurt others, you dip into their bucket. You will dip into your own bucket, too. You never fill your own bucket when you dip into someone else's. But guess what? When you fill someone else's bucket, you fill your own bucket, too. You feel good when you help others feel good. All day long, we are either filling up or dipping into each other's buckets by what we say and what we do. If you practice, you'll become a great bucket filler. There are many ways to fill a bucket. And remember, when you fill someone else's bucket, you fill your own bucket too. Bucket filling makes everyone feel good. So why not decide to be a bucket filler today and every day? Just start each day by saying to yourself, I'm going to do something to fill someone's bucket today. I am a bucket filler. Yes, you are. Yes, you are, buddy. All right. So that's good. And, uh, you know, something that fills my bucket is being a grandpa. And a lot of people are wondering, well, are you going to bring out a picture or not? So, all right, I will. All right. So uh, this is uh, Ivy right there. Came in in June, the young, youngest member of our family, and uh, this is Ruby right here, her big sister, who's getting into the big sister thing. And right here is the newest musical group in town, the Flying Ebert Sisters, right there. Okay, so uh, yeah, so that's good. So, so you can see what our theme is today. I think you should have it by now. It's got something to do with buckets. and. Um, Really what it's about is energy, right? We, uh, we carry around an energy with us, and whenever we run into someone else, uh, they feel our energy and we feel their energy as well. So that's what we're talking about today. That's what we're working on. And um, it's been so great to just be around these kids and see them uh, participating and, uh, and, and getting into it. And the energy has been very, very good. And uh, another thing that today is about is kindness. It's about the energy of kindness and showing up in the world with kindness. Kindness kind of gets a bad rap sometimes these days. It's uh, sometimes considered to be weakness and uh, softness. And I think, uh, I think actually kindness is one of the most powerful things we have. One of the strongest things we have is learning to be kind with each other. And so that's a lot of what it is today is bringing a sense of kindness into the world and I think there's room for that now. I don't know if anybody's heard, but there's uh, apparently an election coming up next week. You don't hear much about it, but uh, that's some of the, uh, some of the stuff gets thrown into our buckets too. And so we've got to work on uh, protecting our buckets. So it's going to be a, a lot about that. You know, one of the things that uh, I've been spending a lot of time doing lately is uh, teaching parenting workshops. And I've never been busier, never been busier teaching these workshops. I, get the, I guess this is what uh, retirement is like. 
And, uh, you know, I'm teaching them here at the church. There's a couple of schools that I'm teaching them at, private, teaching in people's homes, doing counseling. And uh, I think one of the reasons why uh, it's so important now is that, um, you know, during the time of COVID, uh, when everybody was locked inside, things changed. Things changed. And kids are struggling in school now. And they're... Uh, uh, struggling not only academically, but also socially, coming back and getting together. And all of us are struggling a little bit with that. And it's so good to be back here in person at the church, isn't it? Isn't it good to be back here in person? Yeah. Because we need each other. We need that connection. We need that kindness from each other and that support from each other. And so I think the, uh, the idea of uh, kindness and of interacting with kindness is a big part of, of what today is about and something that's really needed in the world because our, uh, our world is moving very fast, it's moving very fast now and there's a lot of technology in the world. But I think the human interaction is really important because uh, we found ways to communicate, but there has to be a balance between our technology and our humanity. So the first thing I wanted to talk about today, getting back on the bucket theme, is the, uh, is the way that we fill our own buckets. You know, one of the things that's uh, so great about Mile High Church is uh, the way that we learn how to take care of ourselves here. We have a lot of programs and things that we can do to take care of ourselves. We have classes. We have classes in meditation and mindfulness. We have yoga and tai chi during the week and we have practitioner sessions that are available and support groups so many ways that we learn how to slow down in the world and it's so important that we learn how to slow down and take good care of ourselves when i'm teaching uh, a new group of parents first thing i teach rule number one it's called take good care of yourself parents take good care of themselves and I think it's important for all of us that we learn how to put ourselves first in a healthy way. You know, when you're on an airplane, those people are given the announcements that you don't listen to. One of the things that they say is, when the oxygen mask comes down, put yours on first before you help other people. And I think that's an important rule. I think it's an important rule because we can't really help anybody else, whether it's our children or our friends or our loved ones unless we take good care of ourselves. And the way that we do that is by learning how to slow down, which is so much about what we teach here. The thing that Marianne Williamson said about slowing down, there's only one way to gain power in a world that is moving too fast to sl is to slow down. And the only way to spread one's influence wide is to go deep. The world we want for ourselves and our children will not emerge from electronic speed but rather from a spiritual stillness that takes root in our souls. Then, and only then, we will create a world that reflects the heart rather than shattering it. So learning how to slow down is such an important part of our teaching here, and it's why we come together. Just the feeling and the energy that's in this room and that's on this campus during the week. And it's such a joy to have our children be a part of it and to see that we are modeling that for our kids a way for them to take good care of themselves too. Because we also contribute to putting things in somebody else's bucket, right? There are ways that, that we show up and we share our kindness. One of the reasons that uh, I've always loved being around here is that we're very welcoming to kids. You know, what Tom talked about is very true. Kids feel welcome here. They feel loved, they feel respected. That's why they come back. And that's such an important part of what we do. And that thing of us being back together now, it's different here. I mean, I certainly welcome all you people that are watching us online, and I hope that you'll come back and see us. And there's people from far, far away. And you can feel the energy even when you're watching online because there's an energy of kindness here. One of the things that our founder, Dr. Ernest Holmes, said is that science of mind is a religion, a philosophy, and a way of life. To me, what's always been most important is the way of life part of it. 
It's great learning about these principles, but I think the thing that's really good about it is putting them into our lives. One of the, one of the uh, places that I've been teaching parenting is the school up in Evergreen. And they go up through eighth grade, and their eighth graders took a kind of a capstone trip to uh, Washington, D.C. a couple weeks ago with some advisors, 13 eighth graders going to Washington. And my friend said it was so good to, to be there with them because, um, you know, when they started the first day of doing their touring, going around all the different places, the different monuments and the different museums, and they got to, they got to be with some legislators and learn about how government works. And before they started, they all turned in their phones. And so as they were going around, it was just great. She said, just the conversations as they were walking, because they walked for miles, and the kids were having so much fun. And the, uh, when they got together for meals, just the conversations that went back and forth, and the depth of them, and the friendships that were made there. She said they went to a museum, a very famous, fancy art museum, and uh, one of the guides said, well, you know, in this museum here, um, you can't take any pictures. That's, that's one of the rules, you can't take any pictures. One of the kids raised her hand and said, oh, we don't have our phones with us. And the guide just had this huge smile on his face like, I don't hear that much. <laughs> All right. So that thing of operating without phones was a very new thing for them. And she said when they went back to the airport, you know, they all got their phones back. And she said when they were there waiting for the plane, it was very quiet because they were all looking down. <laughs> and so there's a balance. There's a balance that we have to come to to balance our humanity and our technology. And it's important when we're talking about the energy that we share back and forth. You know, text messaging is great for sending uh, information about where you might be waiting, but all of us have gotten text messages and we went, wow, what did she mean by that? <laughs> or, wow, did he really say that? And that's how we uh, kind of dip into each other's buckets by doing that. So I think that balance between humanity and technology is a lot of what today is about. I used to get up here every Sunday and tell people to tell, uh, turn off their cell phones. Remember that? The cell phone guy? That seems like a long time ago. Uh, but that balance is up. Because the next thing I want to talk a little bit about is putting a lid on our bucket. Dr. Michelle said, yeah, that's something that my father used to say. Put a lid on it. Put a lid on it. But what I'm talking about is a little bit different thing. The energy that we're taking in in the world. Just think of the energy that's around now because of the selection coming up. All the accusations that are being thrown around. All the negativity that's being thrown around. That winds up in our bucket too. And so we have to protect ourselves from that. And that's what our spiritual practice does and that's what our intention does. When we set an intention to be kind and to be mindful. To show up in the world that we want, in a way that we want to show up. Because the thing that you notice, I think, over time, has anybody else ever noticed it, that the news always seems to be bad? <laughs> it's just kind of the nature of that particular show. <laughs> and it causes us a lot of anxiety. It really does. <clears throat> and so we need to balance that. We need to balance that and put a lid on our bucket. And one of the things I think that's important is the way that we set good limits and boundaries around ourselves. When I'm teaching my parenting workshop, there's a, a thing that I give when I'm working with a group of parents of teenagers, tweens and teens, there's a thing I hand out called the house rules. And I say, I want you to take this piece of paper and just put it on the refrigerator at your house with one of those goofy magnets and don't tell your kids that it's there. Right? See if they ever mention it. And they usually don't. But you know that they read it. But the first rule is... <laughs> Treat your parents with the same respect that they treat you. Who's setting the standard? We are. We're setting the standard for our kids about the way that we treat each other, the way that we operate in the world. You know, I tell parents when your kids are being snarky, and sometimes they are, you can just say, you know, I'm not feeling respected right now. We'll come back to this. Try not to worry. You can always throw that in. 
But I think it's important that we model respect for our kids. We're showing them how to do it. They're watching us. And our spiritual practice has so much to do with that. Something that Yogananda said, Paramahansa Yogananda, he said, learn to carry all of the conditions of happiness within yourself by meditating and attuning your consciousness to the ever-existing, ever-conscious, ever-new joy, which is God. Your happiness should never be subject to any outside influence. Whatever your environment is, don't allow your inner peace to be touched by it. You know, a story that I love I heard a long time ago about Mahatma Gandhi when he was working tirelessly to try to free the Indian people from British rule. And he just kept getting busier and busier with meetings and marches, meetings with people at Parliament and going to London and and his life just got busier and busier and busier. But somehow he always found a way to meditate, time to meditate. For an hour a day, he protected that time. And at the absolute peak of that time, the story goes that he said, well, I am so busy today, I'll meditate for two hours. I love that. Nothing was going to shake his inner peace. Nothing was going to take that away from him. And that's important for us in this time too. The election will come and go. We'll have to keep going. And I think if we can bring kindness into this culture, each of us individually, It's such an important thing right now. As you leave today, as you're walking out the door, each of you will get a drop of kindness from one of the kids at the door. A little something for you to put in your pocket. Hang on to this week. The last thing I want to talk about here is committing to kindness. Committing to it. Bringing it into the front of our attention. One of my favorite teachers in uh, Science of Mind is a guy called Raymond Charles Barker. He was a good friend of Dr. Holmes. Dr. Holmes uh, encouraged him to move to New York City and start his ministry there, and he did. Very successful minister. And he wrote a book called The Power of Decision. I just always love this book because it's so clear. So clear about make a decision. And when you decide, you will find that the universe conspires to help you. But until you decide... The universe doesn't know what to do with you. So I'm asking us to commit to kindness today as we go forward from this place. You up for that? Kindness is strong. Kindness is powerful. Here's what Barker said about it. Where your attention goes, your emotions follow. This is a basic truth that any person wishing to use the science must know. Memorize it right now. This one statement may be the very key you are seeking to change situations in your life. Mind is the only creative power, and mind is a field of interaction between thought and feeling. Place your attention on the attitudes, situations, and people who will add to your well-being. Doing this is sound mental practice is actually affirmative prayer. Place your attention on the attitudes, situations, and people who will add to your well-being. There always will be situations going on. There will always be things in the headlines to grab our attention. There will always be another text coming in on your phone. But the people who are next to us, the people that we love, the people that we're meeting for the first time, We can reach out in kindness, and we're going to make a difference. We talked a lot about children and families today. Families are the building blocks of a culture. This culture that we're in now, we can make it more beautiful with drops of kindness. So let's show our kids how it's done. Let's pray together. So I give thanks right now for this beautiful container we call Mile High Church. For the love and the safety and the joy that we feel in each other's company. I give thanks for our children this day. How they bring us hope. 
how they remind us of how much good is in the world, how much love is in the world. We were created in love. So we open right now to the presence of the living spirit. I affirm and know for each of us that the divine circuits are open or that spirit might have its way with us. So we open to the higher aspect of ourselves, our God self. And we commit this day to take good care of ourselves, to extend love and kindness to the people that we meet, to raise the vibration on this beautiful planet of ours, to take care of it. We extend this day the love and the power and the blessings And we give thanks for people all over this planet who are connected and worshiping in their own ways. We have much work to do and we are the ones that can do it. So I give thanks for each person here today, each person online can hear the sound of my voice. We can be kind. Kindness is a great, great power. Let's give that away. For this I give great thanks. And so it is.